What's up guys, this is Wolf from From Scratch. Once again, I'm doing another Civilization 5 guide and a Brave New World special. Um, last time, if you tuned in, I did a guide to Poland, which is a very sort of a jack-of-all-trades kind of civilization, getting a free social policy as you advance the next era, as you can see. So that kind of make, makes them a very malleable civilization, able to adapt to their neighbors. If Attila's nearby, you can go into honor. If you want, you can go and focus on science, culture, whatever. It's a good four-city superpower. Now, this week I'm doing another Brave New World Civ. Probably the most controversial, I guess. Which one? We're doing Venice. Probably actually one of my favorites of pack. But... Old age to little stability. In aligning yourself with the Fourth Crusade, and used the Crusaders to reacquire lost territory for Venice. Your role in guiding the Crusaders during the sacking of Constantinople led to an even greater expansion of your power and secured your legacy throughout history. Most insightful and cunning doge, Venice once again requires the service of a skilled leader, one who can bring the Republic back to the forefront of world affairs. Can you establish your nation through careful trade, or will you work to conquer your enemies through diplomacy? Can you build a civilization that will stand the test of time? Lovely. Now, Venice is probably the most talked about or controversial civilization in the Brave New World pack. Let's start looking at their special ability, Serenissima. They cannot, they cannot produce or gain settlers, and that when they capture a city through trade or military, they cannot annex it. How only they can puppet. However, they can purchase inhabited cities. They get double the normal amount of trade routes. <clears throat> so, so, so when getting horseback riding, for example, and I'll show you, instead of getting one, like any normal civilization, they get two, and so on, so on, so on. So at the end of the game, you'll have essentially double the amount of trade routes. <clears throat> now, and that makes sense up Venice for a very interesting strategy. Probably one, one where if you're good at one city challenge then Venice should be pretty good for you. But it ends up being you either get wiped out or you're going to be rolling in the cash. But we'll get to that later. So optics is a very it's a, it's a very priority technology for Venice. Oh, words with a bundle there. Firstly, because you'll be able to get things like lighthouses, which and the Great Lighthouse, which is a good little wonder if you want for your unique unit, the Great Galleas. But more importantly, it will give you a free merchant to Venice, which is your unique great person. Uh, the 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 merchant of Venice, I mean, works just like a normal uh, great merchant. You can do trade missions. You can create the customs house tile improvement. What it also does is that if I send it into a city state like Riga, I can buy it I can buy it outright, meaning it'll become a puppet of my of my republic. Because Venice is not an empire, it's a republic. So it is when puppeting city, it is very similar to Austria's diplomatic marriage. How you'll get all the units and access to all the improvements and so on. That also means you will get quite an unhappiness hit. So you do so you do want to do this when you have a state of happiness. Two is not right now so good. But when I get these more luxuries like masonry, which I have, and the marble, and then the calendar, the spices I should be rocking, and then I'll buy out the city state. There is a particular strategy to using the motion of Venice, Venices, but and I'll discuss that in the summary. I find a great thing in this world not so much where we stand as in what direction we are moving. Great. So upon researching Compass, you'll unlock the Venetian unique unit, the Great Gallias, which is essentially just a strong version of the Gallias. So, but it's very, but what it's designed to do and what they want you to do is use that unit to protect your sea trade lanes or your sea trade routes. So that, that for that purpose, it is quite good. And then when upgrading to frigates and then eventually destroyers, 
it will all be very useful for protecting the city lanes. It's also a good uh, technology for Venice, as you have you get the harbour, which will allow you to exchange your sea trade, which is very important for Venice, as well as giving you an additional trade route. And for Venice, that means an additional two trade routes. As you can see in my top left, I've I've got a couple of technologies. And if I was playing as a regular civilization, I'd only have four trade routes, whereas Venice, I have eight. So, to summarize on Venice, Venice is actually one of my favorite civilizations because it means you have to have this little mess up your strategy just a little bit. If you're good at a one city challenge, then you should be alright at Venice. When using their great merchants of Venice, or their merchants of Venice, sorry, Venice, I get that confused sometimes, you should use your first one to pop in a nearby city state once it's got a bit of maturity going. After after that, use the rest of them, but maybe two of maybe about two of them to make customs houses, just so the early game will have a bit of a push for your economy, just a little bit as it will pay off better in the late game. The rest you should use like normal great merchants and use them on trade missions that are not some gold and influence. Venice is a diplomatic civilization. Okay, that much is clear. And the, pro the problem with Venice is that either, and similar to the AI, early game they're either wiped out or it turns out late game and they're just rolling into cash, sometimes 2,000 gold a turn. You shouldn't be too worried with the face of Venice because unless you're in a study person, which will give you like Dance of the Aurora with the Tundra Faith bonus or Desert Folklore, you're not really going to be able to get yourself a religion as Venice. So unless you don't have, unless you haven't got Major Desert or Tundra, I just let the let the civs with the religions fight over your cities, and that way you might be able to pick up the different unique religious buildings like the cathedrals and pagodas. All of that will help you. In a way, or, way or other, because Venice also has only one city, the cost of their social policies is incredibly low, and that means you should also be able to do a bit of t play around with a bit of culture and tourism as well, and that will suit you very well when it comes to ideologies, as you should really be picking freedom, and that has the most, that is probably the better one for a diplomatic victory. We can go for another one if if the wind is shifting against freedom, such as if everyone goes order and autocracy, but Freedom is probably the preferred one for a diplomatic victory. In terms of social policies, you really only want to go OCD on tradition. You really want to complete that out. And then focusing next on a bit of liberty, you will get a great merchant of Venice instead of a settler on collective rule. Commerce, patron and patronage, especially patronage. And then maybe later going for exploration, as you do will always have a coastal start. And it does help you out with your sea trade routes. Maybe aesthetics if you've got the time, but really go for commerce, patronage, tradition ap approach. Early wonders are very important for Venice, and I know I'm sort of going on for a while, I'd normally be finished, but the three wonders you must have are the Great Library, the Colossus, especially the Colossus, and the Hanging Gardens. Uh, if you've wondered, all of these things sort of give free, give free things. The library, the free library from the Great Library, uh, free, uh, free cargo ship, <laughs> I forgot my words, and a free garden, which is very important for the great person generation, and thus more, more merchants of Venice. Of course, on the I am playing Prince, as you may have noticed, and on the harder difficulties, difficulties, I do acknowledge that this may be getting a bit hard, maybe a bit hard. To get all three. And if you can manage it, like I have, the Great Lighthouse isn't a bad one to grab as well, as it will give you an extra movement for your great galleasses. So all in all, Venice is really, really, I think a rather peculiar and interesting and fun sieve to play. And when you see late game, when they're rolling in the cash, they are really fun to play. The AI can be a bit devious actually. Um, and he will actually, he will pop at city states, he will do that quite a bit, and he will work against you. He's probably one of the better diplomatic AI. And if you are playing as Venice, when you are rolling in that cash, if Greece is in your game, like mine, then do expect, and Austria, do expect to have a little bit of competition, as especially Greece, with their special ability, but it will keep you a bit active, and, and that will stop the whole 
continuous next turn pressing that you do tend to do as Venice. So, that's another guide done for Civilization V. Such, such a great game, isn't it? That's my Venice guide done, and that's what we've got.